A blistering report is released by the Department of Justice about the Baltimore City Police Department. The probe started following the death of Freddie Gray in April of 2015. It sharply criticizes officers for using excessive force and discriminating against African Americans. WJC is live with complete coverage. Megan McCorkle has more on how city leaders are responding to this report. Tracy Leong speaks to members of the community about the findings. But first, we start with WJC investigator Mike Helgren with more on the findings and recommendations. Mike? Denise, the DOJ report finds that if you're an African American in Baltimore, you're often the target of police. And leadership has done little in recent years to root out corrupt cops. We know that our citizens are outraged at some of the details included in this report. And they should be. The blistering Department of Justice report laid bare problems in the Baltimore City Police Department. Racism, lack of accountability, understaffing, and abuses of police power that violated the constitutional rights of thousands of citizens. This report is not an indictment on every man and woman that has the privilege of wearing this uniform, this patch, and this badge. Federal investigators found officers retaliated against people for freedom of speech, and some supervisors instructed officers to target African Americans. Examples include a woman's strip and cavity search down the street for a broken headlight. An African American man stopped 30 times in less than four years but never charged. And dozens of complaints officers used racial slurs that were misclassified and never properly investigated. Policing that violates the Constitution or federal law severely undermines community trust and blanket assumptions or stereotypes about certain neighborhoods can lead to resentment of the police. Also troubling abuses against the vulnerable, sex crime victims, disabled citizens and juveniles and officers who faced severe retaliation from within their ranks for reporting crooked cops. Justice officials found one officer who faced more than 100 complaints but was slapped on the wrist for a minor violation. In short, troubled officers routinely got away with abuse. We have to heal our city. It's not easy work. You know, while people say, well, who's to blame and what's the answer? The answer is we have to get through this tough work together. The DOJ says it now has the framework for an agreement with the city that will head to federal court, a tedious and expensive process for Baltimore that could take years. This is in our faces, and we've got to take action definitively. And this is what is called the agreement in principle between the Department of Justice and Baltimore City, signed by the mayor, the police commissioner, and various federal authorities. It's not final yet. It outlines the problem areas, but there's no timetable on when the reforms will happen. Reporting live at City Hall, Mike Helgren, WJZ Eyewitness News. Mike, thank you. And WJZ Live complete coverage continues now with Megan McCorkle. She speaks with city leaders about this report and its findings. Megan. Well, the some leaders say that the new report includes complaints that they've been hearing from Baltimore residents for years and years. The revelations in the DOJ report not surprising for some Baltimore leaders. When I read the report, uh, I was not shocked. It's what many Baltimoreans have known for far too long. I have been stopped. I have been frisked. I have all the things that it said is things that I have personally lived in my life. The results of that zero tolerance policy coming to a head in the city last April. We now know what happens uh, when the community doesn't respect the police, doesn't have faith in the police. Marilyn Mosby says the department has routinely failed to oversee, train, or hold bad actors accountable. Now with federal oversight, many hope the report leads to major reforms throughout the police department. I think it is a major crucial step in bringing us together as a community. Some leaders say it all starts with what happens here at the City Police Training Academy. If you're not properly trained, then and then you don't have supervision, that's a formula for disaster. Police leaders have already taken steps to increase bias training and now require officers to walk the beat for the first three months on the job. Now they'll focus on the DOJ recommendations. Our job now is to put our head down once the fanfare dies off in the next couple of days and start to get to work. To try and rebuild trust between police and the community they serve. 
And in a statement released in just the past hour, FOP President Gene Ryan calls the new DOJ report, quote, a clear indictment of the failed leadership at all levels of city government. Live at City Police Headquarters, Megan McCorkle, WJZ Eyewitness News. Thank you, Megan. And our live complete coverage continues now with Tracy Leong. She has what community activists are saying tonight. Tracy? That's right, Denise. Community leaders tell WJZ the report didn't reveal anything groundbreaking. In fact, it simply confirms the problems they've already been actively working on, but they do believe it is the first step in mending our city. The report stated what we already knew. Mm -hmm. um, what we've known for a very long time. Community leader Erica Alston Buck not surprised by what this year-long investigation into the Baltimore City Police Department reveals. She says the next step is reform, which starts with police engagement to ultimately build trust in the neighborhoods they protect, giving our youth the opportunity to grow up and have a positive and constructive relationship with officers. When there's something wrong, a child can trust that I can go to an officer and say, help me, and they'll be helped and not arrested. While this report highlights significant significant challenges. Some criticize it for lacking any depth. I think it's probably at the first step. It's not in the middle of the stairway. Social justice yeah. activist Michael yeah. Johnson finds the Department of Justice's well, report to be vague, lacking any real accountability. Did it probe deep enough into the problem? No, no, I don't think it did. I think it was a very well put together uh, uh, sophomoric approach to the problems here in Baltimore. Johnson believes the report paves the path for change, acknowledging our community's voice and demand for fair treatment, but there's still a long road ahead. A lot of conversations, uh, a lot of exposure. We have to expose the corruption. We have to expose the bad police. We have to say what's wrong. And then we have to say what can be right as a team. Michael Johnson is planning a meeting for this Friday. He's inviting the community to attend and voice their concerns. Then they can launch a plan and move forward. Reporting live, Tracy Leong, WJZ Eyewitness News. Tracy, thank you. And here's what you need to know about the Baltimore Police Probe. The Department of Justice released its findings today, saying that the Baltimore City Police Department failed to provide officers with resources and blamed the old zero tolerance policy. An agreement will now be entered to negotiate an enforceable reform plan. The mayor says so far, 26 policies have been reformed.